Good morning. So, let's you and me talk about CSS. And why CSS is one of the easiest thing in the world to learn and one of the hardest thing in the world to master. And more specifically why most developers I know absolutely hate CSS and never ever ever really get good at it. <clears throat> so, CSS or cascading style sheets was a concept even invented, I think it's in, in the 90s. And if you're completely unfamiliar with it, it's basically the way that you style web pages. You have different properties which you declare colors, font, fonts, margins, paddings, widths, and heights, and all that good stuff. That's what you use it for. And the basics of it is that you declare a so called selector or a class or an ID or something which then is tied into an element in your HTML so that you know you can map one set of styles to that element. All right, those are the basics. The browser then takes care of you know actually doing the, the proper painting and making the UI look in accordance to what you've declared. So think of it as declaring some rules. Now the issue with CSS is that well it's back, it's basically the cascading part. That's actually, in my opinion, what the problem is. So, if you declare a class, say, class one, and you put that at the top of the file, you can then declare another class one with a different set of rules underneath it. And those styles will override whatever styles were declared higher up on the, in the file. And the issue here is that since you can basically create rules that either are very specific or the rules that are very generic, you get a, what we call, well, basically you get a global context where you can have what's called CSS mutations. And over, you know, over time in a large project, odds are that your CSS is going to grow really, really big. And frankly, it gets to the point where you will make this beautiful component or whatever is going to fit into a page and you realize that because of decisions that have been made previously by other coders whom they might not even work there anymore and you know for them it may may have made sense that hey let's globally declare the line height of all text to be 21 pixels for example when they did that the site was probably very small problem is that now for your use case it doesn't fit anymore and because everything is global and, you know, all of these uh, other text piece, the pieces of text virtually are still relevant on the site, you have no idea, like, you can't just remove the rule, you have to override it. And that's actually what I think is the general rule for CSS over time or legacy CSS. I say that, I, that's what my motto is anyways, you never fix CSS, you just add new rules at the bottom of the file in general and if you do any type of front-end development i'm pretty sure you you have some experience with what i'm talking about anywho so that's basically like to kind of summarize what the act like in a, in in something that's more concrete why people like myself and like developers front-end developers hate css is because everything is global which means that once it's been declared in the file it's very often the case that you can never change it again. Because if you remove a CSS rule, it's often very difficult for you to figure out if you broke something. Because the rules, sometimes you're lucky and there's like a very specific rule that's just on a single element or something like that. But in general, that's not the case. So what happens is that you find yourself afraid virtually. You, you, you're afraid to change, a, change it, because if you do, odds are that somewhere something on the page is relying on that rule. It might not even be the actual element, it might be an adjacent element, it might be a sibling, you know, or a parent, or like there might be any number of things that break just because you change that one thing, and that's usually why people simply add more CSS and override it. So, how do we mitigate this? Now, 
there are two approaches in my opinion that work very well that i can tell you from experience work extremely well i like one better than the other but i'm going to share both and give you a small use case for both of them so to me the best way of solving these th this issue and hopefully you'll agree is that you know don't try to necessarily fix css I, like i mean it's not gonna the standard's not gonna change anytime soon this is the way it works we're gonna have to we're gonna have to live with it and i think one of the most elegant ways of solving this problem is using bem or block element modifier and i this is not a talk about bem don't worry if you watched my other talks about bem you know that i try to describe it in a little bit more detail but you can check it out block my element modifier go and look that up it's going to going to help you a lot with your css uh, but the basic idea is that you put a naming convention on your class names you put up some rules for your css development that makes it very scalable and these rules through a lot of trial and error on a lot of you know very probably very frustrated front-end developers part over the years have been very helpful at least for me it's made my i mean i used to like i remember when i first started out i really hated css and i was so frustrated that i could never get it to work over time and always i always hit this, these problems but i promised myself if there's one thing i'm gonna do now that i know java and node and like th th that stuff and i feel comfortable with that is to get css right i'm gonna fucking do it because I, like everybody i talked to said that i just gave up i hate css and i said i'm not gonna be one of those people i'm gonna learn this if it takes me 10 years, I'm going to learn it. Luckily, I had the good fortune of being hired by Ticketmaster. I talked to one of their architects, Oliver, uh, Oliver Turner, who is... Uh, and he's just an amazing guy. Like, uh, I've, I, I remember that, like, after... I, I think I had a little bit of a bro, bro crush on him. I'm going to be honest. A little bit, just a little bit. He's the most charming British man I've ever talked to. And uh, he, he introduced me to them, like I, literally in my phone, co phone interview with him. And I was like, I, I still am very grateful for him, to him for that, because it's, you know, I, I actually told them once I came over to visit in the UK and I said, you know, you leveled up my CSS skill immediately, like just one up me immediately. So that's the one way to do it. Now there's another concept called CSS modules, which is well it's not it's i don't know if it's new or or anything but basically the idea is that you have a preprocessor where which walks through all of your css rules and puts a little unique hash on top of it, it basically rewrites all your css classes and ids and so forth and puts a, put, puts a unique hash on it which means that you know any even if you have a double declaration of is hidden it's a classic css class name that everybody uses it's going to have a unique identifier. So there's a one-to-one -one mapping to, between that text and whatever's on the page. And that's actually what, what I wanted to end on. Like that's the core issue, like the core issue with CSS is this global namespace where, you know, everything is living in the same space and any rule can affect any other rule. And what you want, what you really need is this isolation that's what you're going for you're going for an isolation between the rule and the styling that you declare and the element that you're intending to be affected by that thing so ideally you want to achieve that either through css modules or bem or something like that but you're always going for a one-to-one -one mapping between one rule and one element and rather than having these global styles that apply to everything they are there are a few use cases for them but they're very narrow so learn very carefully which ones they are usually it's you know resetting padding and margining and normalizing your css for browser <laughs> compatibility but for the most part try to isolate one rule to one element or one element type and you're gonna be good